Hello and welcome to the first of many Lords of the Fallen build videos. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Dual Pieta Sword build, which is a pure Radiance build in which you stack buffs and you melt bosses. Now, of course, for the weapons we are using the Dual Pieta Sword, and for the Catalyst we are using Agony's Light because that is the lowest weight Catalyst we can equip. Pieta's sword will also have three Omirun runes, which I will talk about a little bit later. For the spells, we have Radiant Weapon, Invigorating Aurora, and Aura of Tenacity. For the armor, we have the Ardent Penyet Head Cage, and we have the Tancreated Armor set for the rest of the slots. We have the Empyrean Pendant, or the Hollow Triptych, depending on if you want more poise damage or more overall damage. For the rings, we have the Grayson's Ring, and we have the Orion Sorcerer's Ring. For the stats, we have 17 Endurance, 60 Vitality, and 75 Radiance, and that's going to give us level 125. For the starting class, we want to choose the Orion Preacher, which is the Pure Faith starting class. Now, this is how you find the Bowl of Revelations, which you will need to unlock the Remembrances. So, you need to defeat certain bosses and soul flay their stigma to get Remembrances. So, this is how we get the Pieta Sword and Tansurid's arm set. Now, Agony's Light and the helmet that we're using for this build, the Ardent Penniot Head Cage, both drop from this Ardent Penniot you can find on Pilgrim's Perch. Now, to get runes to put into your weapon, you need to go to Erlinda, the blacksmith. And when you give her the chipped rune tablet, you can unlock the purchasing of the Omrian rune which is what we will use because that increases our faith scaling, which increases our damage. This is the path to get to Stoman, the vendor who sells the Orion Sorcerer's Ring and the Invigorating Aura spell. Now as you see, I don't have any shortcuts unlocked, so this is the easiest path. Here is where the merchant will be, assuming you follow his quest line to sell you the spell and the ring. In order to get the Grayson's ring, you need to progress Damro's the Marked quest until she asks for the three pieces of Rogar flesh, and upon doing so, her inventory will expand to give you access to the Grayson's ring along with some other rings. The Hallowed Triptych can be found in the Mains of the Hallowed Brothers. And it's quite a walk from the nearest vestige, but the Hollow Triptych is the best pendant in the game for any build that has holy damage. It allows you to basically melt bosses' poise, and you can kind of think of this like Flame of the Red Mains in Elden Ring before the nerf. The bosses just go down so fast, and it's definitely the best in slot pendant for anything that has holy damage. However, if you wanted to have a little bit more damage, but didn't want the poise damage for whatever reason, you can go with the Empyrean Pendant, that boosts your damage, but in most cases, the Hollow Triptych is just going to be so much better. Here's where you get Aura of Tenacity, so from the hub area you can roll into these barrels and pick it up quite easily. And then to get Radiant Weapon and to get the Empyrean Pendant, you talk to Exactor Doomire. After progressing through the main game, I'm not exactly sure what the trigger is, and from what I see online it appears to be different for different people. Now. This build is quite good. I would probably put it on the more broken side of things for now. I assume they might patch it and make it a little bit less viable. However, I don't think you can actually reduce this build to it being 
on viable simply because you have so much regen, so much damage, and you take so little damage. This is, in my opinion, the best build in the game. Obviously, for PvP, there's going to be better options, but for PvE and PvP, this is a good all-around option for your first playthrough and going into New Game Plus. And I think a lot of the community sentiment will agree with that. I would like to point out that I don't know how the damage formula works, so I don't know how effective armor is. This build simply has the highest physical damage armor I have been able to find. And so if you wanted to choose a lighter armor, you absolutely could. Nothing is stopping you. I'd also like to point out this is my first time introducing item locations into my videos, so if you have any thoughts on how I could do it better, I would love to hear it. Thank you guys for watching, and have a good day.